Okay, the question is determine which of the board criteria are fulfilled by each of the three projects. Showing all relevant calculation for project three. Discuss the issue involved in using each investment appraisal method to determine whether or not to undertake the project and to decide the order of priority between the projects. So professional marks are also given. Um, each company is a large manufacturer of savory snack foods, which is looking to diversify its product portfolio. Its board is considering three major investment in the production facilities, any or all of which could be chosen. Project number one, sweet bars, PZ water, fruit drinks. The amount of investment required for each project is the same. The board will be considering the result of various investment appraisal calculation. Each project has a time horizon of four years and has to fulfill the following criteria to be considered for investment. NPV should be positive. Duration should be less than three years. In value address, 95% confidence level that NPV will be positive. Okay. Each company finance director has carried out a full appraisal of project one and two but become, became ill before he could complete the appraisal of project 3. The result of the appraisal of the project 1 and 2 are as follows. NPV is given. Duration is given. Value at risk is given. 10.6 and 7.4. Each company board wants to full appraise Appraisal to be made a project three and a summary to be produced whether or not each project fulfills uh, each criteria. Project number three. Cash flow before tax and working capital for project three is given. Immediate capital expenditure is 140 million. In initial capital expenditure will direct 50% tax allowable depreciation immediately. When immediately is given, so we will calculate the capital announced or depreciation in year zero and 50% at the end of year one. Realizable value of the project at the end of year four can be assumed to be zero. The copper tax rate is 25% per year. Uh, any tax losses on the project should be offset against the project profit in the future year. So that means we have to carry forward it. Company currently has 100 million shares in issue, trading at a market capitalization of 420. Market capitalization means market value. Market value of its debt is 220 and it has a pre-tax cost of debt is 5%. Asset beta for the fruit drink sector is assumed to be 0.96. Risk-free rate is 2.4. Market risk premium is 7%. For the purpose of the value address calculation, it is assumed that NPV of the project 3 calculated will be an expected value and the standard deviation of this expected value is 3.5 million per year. Relevant number of the standard deviation for a 95% confidence level is 1.645. Okay. Leave the value at risk. We will cover it later. Let's solve the NPV quickly. Let's solve it. Don't worry about the result. By the way, what is the requirement? Uh, determine which of the board criteria are fulfilled by each of the three projects, showing all relevant calculation for project three. So technically, we need to calculate everything for the project three. First of all, let's calculate the part A, NPV. So everything is in million dollars. All figures are in dollars. Okay. 
बिफोर डेक्स कैश लॉस फोर्टी थ्री सेवेंटी फाइव पॉइंट वन सेवेंटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन ट्वेंटी नाइन पॉइंट सेवन ओके डेप्रिसिएशन फिफ्टी परसेंट इन ईयर वन ऑफ वन फोर्टी मिलियन and 50% in year zero okay next nothing any other expense no taxable profit okay taxes how much is the tax rate Uh, 25%. Okay, the problem is we have to carry forward the losses, so that's why I will do in the working. Let's do in the working. A seven. carry forward losses 70 will become positive 27 in the next year and the remaining in the next year okay so what are the taxable profit apply the this should be uh 27 27 is negative okay okay this is wrong now we will carry forward both of these to the next year Seventy five one completely in this year. Knock off, and how much is the remaining? That will be netted off in the next year. Seventy five plus twenty seven plus this twenty one point nine, right? Twenty one point nine minus minus and. Twenty one point nine, right? I think now it is correct. So tax is twenty five percent. These are the taxes. A forty eight. Let me copy it above. A forty eight. Okay, add back the depreciation. Now, working capital change. Ah, uh, minus twenty five. Minus three. Minus three point three. Minus three point seven, and plus thirty five. Investment one forty. Anything else? Nothing, right? It would be negative. Net cash loss. Some all cash loss till profit. Okay. So discount factor.
So let's calculate the discount factor below. Beta is given. Beta is how much? Beta? Uh, project beta is 0 0.96. Okay. 0 0.96 is the beta. So market value of equity is 420 million. Market value of debt is 220 million. It is given. Tax is 25%. So calculate beta equity. Beta asset into bracket start equity plus debt into 1 minus T. That is 0 0.75. Divide by equity value. So 1.34 approximately. So registry rate is given that is 2.4. Risk premium is given. That is 7%. So what is cost of equity? Cost of equity is registry rate plus beta into risk premium. 11.76. Okay. What is KD? 5% before tax into 1 minus T now calculate back 11.76 into market value of equity divided by the total okay plus KD into market value of debt divided by total. Nine percent, approximately nine percent is the answer. You can also uh, solve it another. That is, instead of doing this, you can solve in this way. Equity, debt, market values. Cost, total, this into this. So VAC is this divided by this, 9%. You can also solve in this way. Okay. VAC is approximately 9%. So let's calculate the NPV. NPV bracket star 9%. Select all cash flows from year 1 onwards. Bracket close plus the initial investment. So this is your NPV. So that's how you will calculate the NPV. Twenty point three five is the answer. Twenty five twenty point three five. Let me repeat the tax calculation. What I have done, I have written cash flow before tax minus tax allowable depreciation, then taxable profit. So I instead of solving here, instead of solving here. I solve the text in the working. I have solved the text in the working. So what I have done, I went to the working, written years, taxable profit. This is a minus 70. This is a loss. You have to carry forward it. Minus 27, carry forward it. So I have written positive 70, positive 27. So carry forward in next year, you can only carry forward up to 75. I have carry forward 75. 
this in total is equal to 97. But I have claimed only 75 in year 2. So remaining 21, I will claim against the year 3 profit. Okay. So taxable profit is year 0. In year 0, it's 0. In year 1, it is 0. In year 2, it is 0. In year 3, adjusted is 58. This is adjusted taxable profit. Adjusted. So now you will apply 25% on this profit. It is exactly similar to the previous question which we have solved uh, in previous class. So this taxable profit, you can uh, take this taxable profit in the main performance. From the working. We will not add back tax loss because we are not solving in the main performer. We are solving in the working. Why you want to add in the working? We will not add back the tax loss. If you calculate this working in the main performer, then you have to add back the losses. I'm not solving taxes in the main performer. I'm solving in the working. Why I'm solving in the working? Just to show the clear performer. Just to show the clear working. Just to show, just to avoid any ambiguity. Otherwise, what will happen when there is a... Uh, when you normally carry forward the losses, your working will like it, it, it will become like messy. So, in order to avoid that, I'm doing in the workings. Okay, there is a very good question why we don't charge depreciation in year one and two? Because examiner is saying charge in year zero and one. So, when examiner is saying something, we can't use our terms. Otherwise, if nothing is mentioned, if he generally uh, states that you can claim depreciation 50%, then we assume that we will claim in year 1 and 2. But he has written that you will claim 50% allowance immediately and then in one year time. Immediately means year 0 and one year time means year 1. So that's why. Okay. Okay, let's solve the duration. In duration, you will copy the years from above. Cash loss. All cash flows except here uh, except year 0. Avoid the negative cash flow because duration only considers the cash flows from a year which uh, uh, duration only covers the cash flows from the return phase, from the positive cash flows. Okay, let's calculate the present value first. Let's calculate the present value. In duration, first step is to calculate the present value. Okay, take the sum of the present value. Then multiply each present value with the relevant year. And then take the sum of it. And then calculate duration. By dividing this figure with the above figure. 2.4, 2.5 approximately. 2.5 approximately. So this is the answer. That's how you will solve the duration. Okay. Then value at risk.
you can solve in other way. This is a quick way. That's that's why I'm solving with this way. The topic name is value at risk. Before starting the topic, just translate this wording into your mind. Value at risk. How much value of the business, of the project, of the share, of the bond is at risk? So what do you mean by at risk? If you have any asset, its value can decrease. If you have any share, its value can decrease. If you have any bond, its value can decrease. If you have any business, its value can decrease. If you have any project, NPV, its value can decrease. Sir, if we want to calculate value at risk on liability, its value can increase. Risk means for asset, downward. For liabilities or expenses, upward. So value at risk is, is a concept if you are holding a portfolio, if you are holding shares, if you are holding bonds, if you are doing a project, how much it's that project can lose its value, how much that stock can lose its value, how much can that bond can lose its value. That is value at risk. It's a very, very simple concept. You know, there is a movie on it called The Margin Call. In that movie, one of the trader analysts, he was doing working, identify the value risk of that fund. And it was surprisingly very high. And he immediately report to its senior that the value risk is very high. Your portfolio is going to collapse. So for example, you are holding a portfolio of 100 million. Your assets are 100 million. And if value at risk is 150 million, even 100 million, that means your portfolio can go down to zero. Assets is 100 and all the value is at risk. So your portfolio can go on. Your portfolio will become zero. So any asset, if you're holding any asset, we will calculate its value at risk to judge how much that portfolio can lose its value. Yes, sir. Value at risk is the minimum amount by which the value of an investment portfolio will fall over a given period of time at a given level of probability. Okay. Alternatively, it is defined as the maximum amount that it may lose at a given level of confidence level. For example, assume value at risk is 100,000. Probability is 5%. If probability is 5%, confidence level is 95%. If confidence level is 95%, probability will be 5%. Both are inverse of each other. So in exam, either confidence level is given, either probability will be given. So if the value address, if the calculated answer is 100,000, that means it is 100,000 at 95% confidence level or 100,000 at 5% probability. The first definition implies that there is 5% chance that the loss, minimum loss is 100,000, loss can exceed over it. Or the second definition is, you are 95% sure, you can say with 95% confidence level that loss will not exceed 100,000. For example, your NPV is 20 million. Your value at risk is 11 million. So what is the confidence level? 95%. You will say that there is 95% confidence level that the project NPV will not fall more than by 11 million. Maximum NPV will fall by 11 million. So how do you know it will fall? NPV is positive. Value at risk is a risk, is a loss. So 20 million can fall by 11 million. There is a 95% confidence level. You Either you can explain with confidence level, either you can explain with probability. With probability, 
probability will guide you in this way. There's a 5% chance that loss will exceed and minimum loss is 100. It can exceed over it. Confidence level is maximum loss is there. This, it will not exceed over it. If value test is 11 million, you can say with 95% confidence level that NPV will not fall more than this. How to calculate it? This is the formula. Value test is equal to K. K is the probability level. Normally, it is given in exam. Here, it is 1.645 at 5% probability level. Either in exam, 1% probability, 5% probability, or 10% probability will be given. Into, this is a sign sigma. This is the sign of standard deviation. Into fund value. Into fund value. So value address formula is probability. Into standard deviation, for example, 20% 20, 20 into fund value. If you want to calculate value at risk annual, standard deviation should be annual. If you are calculating value at risk of monthly, standard deviation should be monthly. First thing which you need to remember. Standard deviation should be of the same time of the value at risk time. If you calculate value at risk for six monthly, standard deviation should be of six monthly. So, what is the formula? If annual standard deviation is given and you want to calculate monthly standard deviation, divide with under root 12. This is the way. If annual standard deviation is given and you want to calculate quarterly standard deviation, divide with 4 under root. Okay. Sir, if annual standard deviation is given and we want to calculate four yearly standard deviation, multiply with under root four. In this, it will move in under, uh, under roots. Okay. Now, the formula is value address is equal to for example, annual. K. K is probability level. At 5%, its value is 1.645. Into standard deviation. If it is annual, it should be annual. Into fund value. Sometimes, sometimes, in exam, Sometimes in exam, standard deviation is not given in percentage. If if standard deviation is given in absolute amount, then this formula will become this. If it is the absolute figure, then there is no need to multiply with fund value. If standard deviation is an absolute value, then there is no need to multiply with the fund value. Then this is the formula. Value at risk. Okay. So these are the two formulas which you need to remember. If it is given in percentage, then you will multiply with the fund value. If it is given in dollars, there, then there is no need to multiply with the fund value. Okay. Now, here, example. Annual cash flow from a project are expected to follow the normal distribution with a mean of 50,000. Mean means average. Standard deviation is 10,000. The project has a 10 year life. What is the project? P, project value at risk. If probability is 5%. So what is the formula? K, 
k is 1.645 sorry 1.645 at 5 percent k is 1.645 into standard deviation is 10,000 if it is percentage then you have to multiply with the fund value with the project value you will directly write 10,000 Now, your project is of 10 years. So, multiply with 10 under root. This is your value address. This is your value address. Okay. Next example. A simulation model has been used to calculate the expected NPV of the project. Expected NPV is 280,000. Project has an expected life of 10 years. Volatility of the cash flow is 30,000. Uh, what is volatility? Standard deviation. Standard deviation. So, assuming probability is 5%, I am assuming probability is 5%. So, what is value at risk? At 5% probability, K is 1.645 into what is the volatility? 30,000. But this is this is annual volatility. And our project life is 10 years. So what we have to do? At 5% confidence level, okay. so technically we have a value address formula, you two formulas you need to remember. K. What is K? I will explain. Into standard deviation. Into fund value. It can be fund value. It can be asset value. It can be liability value. It can be NPV project value. So starting with the K. Starting with the standard deviation. The first point which you need to remember about the standard deviation. Standard deviation. Standard deviation, this sigma sine is standard deviation. It should have, it should be adjusted for relevant period. Okay. If you are calculating value address for four years, standard deviation should be of four years. If value address case for one year, it should be for one year. If value address case, six month. It should be six month. Okay, sir, how to calculate? I'm assuming annual is given. I'm assuming annual is given. Into four under root. How to put that four? As the under root in Excel, raised to power 1 over 2. If annual is given, that is good, very good. If annual is given and you need to calculate 6 monthly. So how many 6 months in a year? 2. Okay. Okay, then second point which you need to remember. 
F standard deviation is given as absolute value. So what do you mean by absolute value, dollar value? Then formula will become like this. There is no need to multiply with further anything. Yes, it should be uh, adjusted for the relevant period, but you will not multiply with anything like fund value or anything. Okay. Now the third point. What is K? K is probability level. In exam, three probability can be tested. 1%, 5%, 10%. Either word probability will be given, either word confidence level will be given. If probability is 1%, confidence level will be 99%. If probability is 5%, confidence level is 95%. If probability is 10%, confidence level is 90%. So, you will calculate this, the value for this 1% from the normal distribution table. What is normal distribution? Normal distribution is, this is a statistic term that if you're holding a portfolio, this is the mean, this is the average of the portfolio. For example, if you're holding a stock, this is the average, mean is average. The stock will move downward and stock will move upward like in exactly equal like equal percentages. If stock is moving by 50%, stock will downward move 50%. Value at risk will always be a tail because value at risk is the loss. How much your portfolio can lose. So value at risk will always be at a tail. So this is the, if this is the positive side, this is the negative side. Our assumption is if stock is moving upward, there is equal chances that stock will move downward. In reality, this is not possible. In reality, asset is some, sometime it is moving upward and sometime it is moving downward. But we always assume that it will follow normal distribution. If it is moving upward, it will also move downward. And value address will always be a tail, a downside de deviation actually. What is value address? How much a portfolio can lose its value? Obviously, if this is a plus side, Portfolio will not lose its value here. Portfolio will only lose its value here. So normal distribution table will be given. You will estimate this K value from that table. But instead of wasting time, just remember these three figures. For 5%, it will always be 1.645. You can, you can also take 1.65. For 1%, 1 it is 2.33. And for 10%, it is 1.28. So you can assume these three. Instead of looking at the table and try to remember this, always for 5% use this value, for 1% use this value, and 10% use this value. But I hope it will be given an exam. It will be given an exam. Okay? So let's solve this example again. A project has an NPV of this. Expected life is 10 years and volatility means standard deviation is 30,000. If probability is 5%, for 5% probability value is this. Standard deviation is 30,000. For 10 years, you will multiply with 10 under root. If probability is 1%, obviously this will be replaced with 2.33. That's how you will calculate the answer. What are the benefits? Apparently, it is easy to understand. For example, if value at risk is 10 million at 95% confidence level, 
So we can say that there is a 95% chance or we can say with 95% confidence level that loss will be 10 million. Maximum loss will be 10 million. Loss will not exceed over 10 million. You can compare value at risk of different assets to check which portfolio is risky. Value at risk provide an indication of the potential riskiness of the project. Higher the value at risk, risky is the project. Disadvantage, value at risk can be misleading. Value at risk is just a statistical answer. It can be misleading. Value at risk does not measure worst case. What is What do you mean by worst case? If there is a loss, how much you can incur a loss? Value at risk is only as good as inputs and assumptions are good. We have studied only one method of value at risk. By the way, practically there are other methods of value at risk and all will lead to different results. And another biggest problem, it assumes that value at risk follows normal distribution. However, in reality, it is not possible. So what do you mean by normal distribution? We are assuming that if the stock or the bond or any portfolio, any asset, if it is moving upward, there, are, there is an equal chance that it will move downward. In reality, there are certain assets which normally move downward. There are certain assets which only move upward. So in reality, it follows skewness. It is not exactly bell bell shaped curve. It it moves to one side. Downward, it moves to one side upward. In reality, it does not follow normal distribution. Just remember this word. So in our example, in our question, if we look at our data, the good thing is standard deviation is given 3.5 million. 95% confidence level is given. So what we have to do? Standard deviation. Three point five probability one point six four five. Okay, what is value at risk? One point six four five into three point five, but the issue is the project life is four years. You have to multiply with the under root of 4. Into 4 raised to power 1 over 2. 11.515. 11.515. This is value at risk. You can write... There is 95% confidence level that project 3 NPV will not fall more than 11.51 million from its current level. That's how you will calculate. Keep it simple. Standard deviation is given in dollars. Probability level is given. Multiply it. So why you have multiplied with 4 under root? Because we have to adjust the standard deviation for its timing. It will not be adjusted in the exam. So now write the, all the three projects. 
प्रोजेक्ट वन प्रोजेक्ट टू प्रोजेक्ट थ्री एनपीवी ड्यूरेशन वैल्यू एड रेस्क इलेवन पॉइंट फाइव वन ड्यूरेशन टू पॉइंट नाइन इयर्स टेन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन पॉइंट सेवन थ्री पॉइंट फोर सेवन पॉइंट फोर ओके लेट्स लेट मी एक्सप्लेन द प्रोजेक्ट वन प्रोजेक्ट एनपीवी इज थ्री सेवन पॉइंट सेवन मिलियन बट वैल्यू रेस इज टेन पॉइंट सिक्स देर इज नाइंटी फाइव परसेंट चांस दैट प्रोजेक्ट फर्स्ट एनपीवी कैन फॉल बाय टेन पॉइंट सिक्स मिलियन है वट इज दैट सर इट्स एक्चुअल एनपीवी सेवेंटी सेवन पॉइंट सेवन But there is a risk that it can fall. Its NPV can fall by ten point six million. Supposedly, it fall by ten point six million. What will what will happen? You will end at negative two point nine million. Okay. For second project, your NPV is seven point seven, but it can fall by seven point four million. So only point three will remain. Project three, your NPV is twenty million, but it can fall by eleven million. But still, a good chunk will be remaining. So, according to the value at risk, project number three is very good. According to the NPV, project three is very good. According to the duration, project three is very good because you are collecting your money earlier. discuss the issues involved in each investment appraisal method to determine whether or not to undertake the project and to decide the order of priority between the projects i think order of priority is very clear we will select project 3 on first basis project 3 is very good right and on the risk basis project number 2 and on the duration basis project number 1 but it is clear cut that we will select the project number 3 so you will make different headings here and one by one discuss npv duration and uh, uh, value at risk look npv we don't know about the assumptions of project number 1 and 2 we only know the assumptions of project number uh 3 so you can discuss the result of project number 3 and the assumptions if you look at the cash flows although though no information is given but project 3 has a very healthy cash flows that's why its npv is higher one point which you can discuss is we have taken only 3 years life if project can continue more than 3 years it can add more values nothing is mentioned about the other project as well then you can also discuss about the other assumption that you have used project specific discount rate in order to discount this project and we are assuming that this asset beta of fruits drink sector is assumed to be correct however in reality sector beta does not represent exactly the same which you want because you obviously you you will not start the project exactly similar to the sector sector average does not represent your business so we are assuming that 
एसिड बीटा ऑफ द फ्रूड ड्रिंक सेक्टर इज पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स एंड दिस इज रेलिवेंट हाउर इन रियलिटी आवर बिजनेस वुड बी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दिस इधर आवर बिजनेस वुड बी ग्रेटर देन दिस और इट कैन बी बिकॉज दिस इज जस्ट ए एवरेज एंड वी विल बी ऑन वन साइड ऑफ द एवरेज and you can also highlight this project 3 has more uncertainties that's why its value risk is high then you will discuss about the duration duration according to the duration uh project number 3 should be selected first then project number 1 and project number 2 the benefit of duration is it's consider time value of money and it consider full life of the project but there is one problem with the duration duration does not identify how much value how much total value the project has generated it will only tell you in how many years you are selecting you are uh, collecting all the cash flows so based on duration project you should select project number 3 first then project number 1 and then project number 2 we can also talk about capital loans in in npv discussion then thirdly you will discuss value at risk according to the value address the lowest risky project is project number 2 but at the same time we should consider value address in relation with the npv if we base our decision only at value address we will select project number 2 but this is not a true case we have to compare value address with the npv as well if we compare value address with the npv then project number 3 is good plus you have to discuss that value address assumes that it follows normal distribution and in practically practically it may not be possible that project follows normal distribution simply write this right so then you will write the conclusion that company should select the projects we have to select all the projects or one of the project what was written in the any or all of which could be chosen okay all any or all of which could be chosen this is important you will write in your conclusion that company should select project number 3 because it is fulfilling all the criteria for project number 1 and 2 although the npv is positive but from the value address perspective it looks risky so company should apply the other criteria for example non financial criteria uh which of the project number 1 or 2 which of the project will give us the competitive edge in the future which of the project is more compatible with our strategic objectives or although apparently the project number 2 is not fulfilling the duration criteria or project number 1 value address is high but both of the projects are genetic positive np if company risk appetite is 
higher or if company can compromise on the duration target, then company should select project one and two. Otherwise company, only the project three is fulfilling all the criteria. But it is written in the question that company can select any of the project. So we are already in food sector. So we will launch fruit drinks. But these are also the food projects. So if this is compatible with our business, if it if these two products will give us the competitive advantage in the future, why should not? Why should we? Why we shouldn't launch it? We should launch it because both are giving the positive NPV. Although it looks riskier, but that can also be the disadvantage of value at risk. Value at risk is only giving us uh, value at risk is only uh, value at risk. Also assume that it follows normal distribution. So maybe value at risk answer is not correct. It's a statistical term. We should follow, we should look at, into other methods or other non-financial measures before launching these two products. If non-financial measures are, if non-financial factors are suggesting that we should do the project, then we should firstly start with project three, then one and two. question agenda of last week international investment appraisal question merger restructuring Currency, rail option, bond valuation. Okay, on, on APV, one question. International, one question. Merger, one question. Restructuring, one question. Currency risk, interest rate risk, two question. Make, list down all steps on paper. and memorize it okay we saw for black shows option pricing model revise real option and use calculator to solve okay and then for other topics, bond valuation, do revise bond valuation. Duration, value at risk. Theory of swaps. Centralized. Decentralized strategy. Assumptions, critically discussion of assumption, okay. 
best way is when you are revising all these topics, watch all theory videos. Under revision classes as well. Revise Dutch auction. Revise special purpose acquisition company. All the relevant theory. Okay. These are available in theory videos. Theory videos in include equity overview. Debt overview. And plus ratios as well. You can leave these questions, but do not leave the theory videos. Instead of solving one question, you, you can, if, if you don't have time, leave the question of APV, leave the question of international investor appraisal. You have done enough, but do not leave theoretical videos. Watch all the theory videos. Okay. Watch all the theory videos. Okay, yes. One more thing. Different policy and capacity. Bond valuation theory is very simple. Bond valuation theory is not important. Numerically, it is important. There is no guess. There is no shortcut to success. One week is remaining. Exact one week is remaining. Not exactly one week. Only six, five days are remaining, to be honest. So on, you can only sleep for six hours. And you have to study for 16 hours per day. And these theory videos are very small. Like its time duration is very small. It's not like one hour, two hour videos. Some videos are for two minutes. Some videos are for three minutes and some videos are for like five to 10 minutes. On daily basis, on daily basis, at least watch 10 to 15 videos because these are very small in duration. And if you're able to finish it like twice or thrice, it is, it's, it's like, it's very good for you people. even if you have SBL, ATX or other paper, these theory videos are only for duration is one minute, two minutes, three minutes. Come on. If you, if you don't have time, don't solve these questions again. But watch the theory video. So I am requesting you for the remaining five days. I am requesting you for the remaining five days. Your focus should be on the theory. Your focus should be on the theory. So how much focus? Put your 70% 70, 70 time on the theory and 30% on the numeric for the remaining five days. Uh, NPV method is mostly considered as period method of appraising project. This method compares time value of money instead of whole life of the project. Okay. Duration is easy to calculate. Please don't write it again, okay? It's not easy to calculate. So this is correct. Excellent. This is correct. And your discussion is very good, but you can add more points into it. 
okay because there are eight marks for the theory and five marks for the um five marks for the professional skills you can improve your answer but overall it was good okay this question Okay, one of the student in today's lecture was asking about, sir, why you didn't add back the tax loss? So this student has add back the tax loss. Why? Because this student is showing this tax calculation in the main performer. Right? But I will not, I will insist that solve it in a working. Because this is not a this is like it's calculations are it's not the answer is not a billing it's not like giving you the good look that's why I'm saying although it is correct there is no need to write this formula in the exam yeah this is good all good This is not correct, I think. You are taking savings. This is not correct. This is not correct. If you are solving in this way, you have to multiply with a year as well. Where you have multiplied with the years? This is incorrect. Yeah, 